Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in the series we are going through the chapter one short exercises and as always if you don't understand something you know watch the video again and if you still don't understand something feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor or contact us via email. So we're picking up where we left off. Um, the last video was on 1-8, short exercise 1-8 and this one is picking up with 1-9. So let me get my pen. Okay, so it says here, match each of the following items with its location in the expanded accounting equation using the most detailed category appropriate. So remember the expanded accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus, oops, plus equity. plus revenues, minus expenses, minus dividends, okay? And so let's see here. The So here's the categories, A, B, C, D, and E, right? So they're, they're, even though dividends are part of the expanded accounting equation, um, generally that's a you know, that's derived from the profit or loss on the income statement. So they're only considering liabilities, expenses, revenues, and liabilities, equity, revenues, and expenses. Okay. All right. So um, generally, you know, it's what you what you do with an account is is you think about the category of account, and that's what this is is doing. It's asking you what category you're in. Um, you have to think about its use. Okay. Obviously, like for utility expense. Whenever you have an expense, regardless of what it is, is you would put you would put the word expense after it, whether it's payroll expense, you know, um, like down here is rent expense. Okay, if it's an expense, you know, money flowing out of the business for the operation of the business, it has the expense category. So, utility expense would be uh, expenses, which would be E. An accounts receivable is uh, something you own. All right, it's an asset. You know, people owe you money, okay, so that's something you own, so that would be A. Common stock is an investment in the business, so an investment in the business would be stockholders equity or C. Office supplies, um, you know, op okay, don't get, uh, make a mistake here, okay. This says office supplies. Well, if I buy office supplies, and I own the supplies, meaning I'm inventorying, inventorying them. You know that is an asset, something I own. All right. However, if I'm buying office supplies and I'm going to use it immediately in the operation of my business, well, then that would be an expense. And and usually, um, the for an asset, it's office supplies. or for an expense so that's an asset right and as an expense it would be office supplies expense okay if you see the word expense after it then you you know it's an expense if you don't see the word expense you have to kind of like question what it's for i mean think about say office max or staples right let's just use staples here okay staples they sell office supplies okay but they also use office supplies if they're going to be selling it to customers then that's an asset because why they inventory it right but if they use it for themselves you know for the operation of their business then that's an expense Okay, so be careful whenever you're thinking in terms of uh, items like that, especially office supplies or just plain supplies. Um, it, you, you have to think about its intended purpose. Okay, so um, office supplies here would be an asset. Lease expense computer. All right, so. It's, you know, it has the term expense in it, so we know that it's an expense, so that would be E. 
because we're using the computer. It's the least expense. I hear here again is another uh, uh, the opposite side of the office supplies. Okay, and we'll take Staples again. Right, Staples does sell computers, right? And they also use computers, right? So if they're selling, it's an asset. If they're using it for themselves, it's an expense, right? So in this case, and the expense account is going to be called lease and then the word expense because they're leasing it, all right? So that's an expense. Salary expense, you know, you're paying your employees for the operation of the business. So that's an expense, which would be E. Cash is an asset. You should know that by now, okay? It's something you own. Rent expense, you see the word expense, you know, it's the operation of the business. Service revenue, okay? Now, the thought occurred to me, unearned service revenue. Okay, normally when you see the, the, the word revenue, that equates to sales and would be a revenue account. In this case here, you know, it's service revenue. I mean, so that would come under revenues as D, right? But it could have, uh, the account could have just as been easily called sales or sales revenue. Okay, revenue, right? And these are all revenue accounts. However, be aware that you may see the term unearned service revenue. Okay, well, and this goes back to reading slowly and thinking about each and every word and from the back of your, you know, keeping things in the back of your mind. You know, what's the, you know, what's the connotation of the word unearned? It's something that you haven't earned yet. Sure, it's sales revenue, it's service revenue, it's a sale, but you haven't earned it yet. So if you take money in for this revenue, but it hasn't been earned, then you, you know, that actually becomes a liability because you still owe that um, to someone else. I mean, think about uh, rent, okay? Let's say um, you have rent and, you know, you pay it on a monthly basis, okay? Well, that's an expense, rent expense, okay? But what happens if you, um, it, it's January 1st and you have a lease, like in a mall, okay? You know, say one of your big box stores. Um, you know, they pay their rent, prepay it for the entire year, okay? So, to them, they're prepaying, prepaid rent. And notice I don't put expense after that because of the prepaid. What this means is, is it's an asset because why? I prepaid it, it's my money. I haven't used it yet. So if I wanted it back, it has to come back to me. So that's an, uh, an asset to me. But since I'm, you know, at whatever big box store pays to the mall, okay, well, for the mall, you know, that's service, you know, that's service revenue or sales revenue or rent revenue. Okay, let's call it rent revenue. Uh, let's call it rent revenue. But it's unearned, meaning if this is January, okay, you know, January 1st, I haven't earned any of that rent revenue. Now, if it's January uh, 30, uh, 31st, okay, I've earned one month's worth of rent, but I haven't earned the rest of the year. So that's unearned. And if the big box store comes to me on January 31st and says, look it, um, you know, we're closing, we want our money back. Well, I get to keep one month of rent for January, but the remaining 11 months, which is unearned, has to be returned. And if it has to be returned, that means it belongs to somebody else. So, uh, you know, it's something I owe, and it's a liability. Okay. Just pay attention to that uh, little distinguishing thought there. Okay. All right. Um, accounts payable is something I... Uh, you know, I owe. In other words, I'm 
buying something, you know, if I go to Home Depot and I buy supplies, right, if I don't pay cash for them, I'm buying them on account, which means I'm buying it on credit. Well, being on credit means I have an accounts payable. It's a liability. It's something I owe, okay? So that's B, liability, okay? Land is something a business owns, right? So that's an asset, okay? All right. Okay, so let's see here, 1-10. Label each of the items listed with the abbreviation of the financial statement on which it appears. Items may appear on more than one statement. So they, remember I had said from the introductory videos, every business has an income statement and a balance sheet. Okay. Every business has one. And in this case here, they decided to create a statement of retained earnings, which is the detail for the equity section of the balance sheet. And in the introductory videos, notice I had said there was uh, also a, a common one is the statement of cash flows, which in this textbook, there is one whole chapter, uh, you know, given towards the statement of cash flows in and of itself. But that is optional for a business. They don't have to, you know, make a statement of cash flows just like they don't have to have a statement of retained earnings okay but every business will have an income statement and a balance sheet so what is on the income statement well on the income statement you have on the income statement you have your revenues and you have your expenses and on the balance sheet you have your uh, accounting equation which is your assets equals your liabilities plus your equity and on the retained earnings okay uh, you have an element of equity because we're looking at retained earnings and retained earnings are part of the equity section of the balance sheet okay remember it's the detail for the equity section and there's also an element of a net income or your profit or loss or your profit or loss. So as we go through here, accounts receivable is a general ledger account and it is something we own. Okay, so that's an asset. You know, that's the category for it and the assets are found on the balance sheet. So balance sheet. No, it's payable. Just the term payable tells us it's a liability. Liabilities are also found on the balance sheet. Advertising expense, the word expense tells us it's an, uh, an expense account and expenses are shown on the income statement. Service revenue, remember, re well, you know, revenue or sales, right, um, are on the income statement. Retained earnings obviously ends up on the retained earnings statement. And office supplies, again, you know, office supplies is an asset if you own them because you're reselling them, okay? And that would be an asset and that would be on your balance sheet. But if it had said expense, then this would have been on the income statement, okay? All right, 1-11. Uh, it says enter transactions in the accounting equation. Uh, okay. As a manager of a department store, you must deal with a variety of business transactions. Place the letter of each of the following transactions next to the effect it has on the accounting equation. Okay, so remember the accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Okay, and when you have a transaction, remember there's two sides, right? There's a debit side and a credit side. Right? So A, all right, it says paid cash to stockholders as a distribution of earnings. Right. Well, if I am paying cash, right, that means my cash is decreasing. Right. And if my cash is decreasing, um, 
that means my asset is decreasing. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look. I have an increase in an asset, increase in an asset, increase in one asset. Okay, then I have a decrease in an asset, and a de so it has to be either number four or five here. Okay, so I know I'm going to decrease an asset, but it's paying cash to stockholders as a distribution of earnings. Okay, so my earnings are in the equity section, and if I'm, you know, uh, paying it out, then my earnings are also decreasing. Okay, so a decrease in an asset and a decrease in equity. So this would be A. Um, paid cash to purchase land for bu building use. Okay, so if I'm paying cash, right, cash is an asset, you know, that means I'm decreasing my asset. Well, um, pay cash to, oh, let me see, pay cash to purchase land for building site. So I'm increasing one asset and decreasing another asset. In other words, I'm paying my cash, you know, um, cash is an asset and I have a uh, land. Okay, land is another asset. So in the case of cash, I'm decreasing my cash, but I'm increasing my land. So I'm increasing one asset, the land, and decreasing another asset, the cash. So this would be B. Paid cash on account on an accounts payable. Right? So if I'm paying cash, that means I'm decreasing my asset. And my accounts payable, since I'm lowering my accounts payable, meaning if I had $100 in accounts payable and I'm paying $50 in cash, right? this is accounts payable, if I'm going to pay $50 in cash to lower my accounts payable, right, to reduce my debt, I have a decrease in an asset and a decrease in the liability. So this would have to be C. Okay, sold stock to stockholders. Okay, well if I'm selling stock, that means I'm receiving cash for the stock. If I'm receiving cash for the uh, common stock, okay, that means I'm increasing my stock, and of course, um, because I'm selling stock, I'm also increasing the number of uh, shares that are being sold, so um, I am increasing an asset and increasing stockholder equity, because common stock is an equity account, so this would be D. And then by virtue of elimination, obviously, this has to be E, but I'm receiving cash, which means my cash is going up um, from the bank in exchange for a note payable. Okay, well, if I have a note payable, right, and it was zero, now I'm going to owe more. And remember, payable is a liability account, so I'm increasing my liability account. So E is an increase in an asset and an increase in the liability. Okay. All right, so that's it for now, and hey, let me see here. Yep, um, that's it for now, and I will, uh, you know, watch the video if you, you know, rewatch it again if you don't understand something, and I will see you in the next video for 1-12. Uh,